Hey guys, so risks of yield farming. All right, there's too much to go over in one video, so I'm going to break it up into these smaller videos. So today's video, I'm going to deal with the first big two I thought, you know. First one is impermanent loss. All right, what is this? It's part of uh, when we provide liquidity, there's this risk called impermanent loss. Have to know about it before starting to yield farm because you can lose a lot of money. So I'm going to go over what impermanent loss is, a little bit of resources where you can read more about it, but just the basics, what this huge risk and fundamental thing is. Uh, and the next one I want to go over is the APYs, all right? Those big numbers which lure so many of us into yield farming, saying you're going to make this much in a year. Huge numbers, all right? We promised the world by yield farming. And how those numbers, they, you know, are they to be trusted? Eh, not really, in my experience. They change dramatically, they fluctuate, they fly downwards usually. And we can get sucked in by them, especially new people, me and a lot of people I know and really how they're not to be trusted. They're not all that they seem. So I wanna go over those two in this video. Uh, so I'll pass over to my former self to go over impermanent loss. Big thing, anyhow. Thanks for watching. Okay, now this is not financial advice. I'm an amateur, I'm learning. This is just my experience so far. The things that I've found tricky and that I've come across. Okay, now the first one of these, if you're gonna do yield farming at all, it involves, like we said last time, going to sort of decentralized exchanges, and providing liquidity. That's kind of step one. Watch the video up here uh, about how to do that. But step one is we provide liquidity. Now, whenever we provide liquidity, we've got the risks of providing liquidity. This is a huge thing. I know I've gone over it before and I'm just gonna go over it briefly now. Biggest one, it's called impermanent loss. Before you start yield farming at all, you've got to work out what this is. Now, here I am on Binance Academy because it's the first one that came up. There might be many other tutorials. Impermanent loss explained. I'm going to link this at the bottom. So, impermanent loss, what it is, is whenever we provide liquidity, uh, remember we always provide two tokens at the same time. So, we provide a pair of tokens, a cryptocurrency pair. We provide both at the same time to provide liquidity. Now, what happens is whilst you're providing that liquidity, if the price of the two tokens that you, you provided change too much relative to each other, let's say you've uh, provided ETH and UNI, you're on Uniswap, ETH UNI, okay? Let's say that ETH doubles in value and UNI drops, you know, 60% in value. What happens is if the two cryptos you've provided, they change in value relative to each other too much, you come to sort of take out your liquidity and get your fees back because you're the middleman and you've lost a whole bunch of money. It's something we definitely have to work out what is this before starting to um, think about yield farming? Because we have to provide liquidity. And if we just, we don't learn about these things, it's like we might be yield farming, you know, and sort of making money off the yield farms and just losing even more money from the liquidity we've provided, from impermanent loss. So you gotta work this stuff out. I know it's a bit of a hassle, but you've gotta work it out. Really, it's fairly simple. What we have to do is we just have to keep an eye on the tokens we provided as liquidity. Whilst we're farming, we just have to watch the price of Ethereum and Uniswap, the two tokens. And we have to make sure that relative to each other, they haven't changed too much in value from when we actually provided the liquidity. A way to sort of um, watch this, there are many calculators. So if, here's an impermanent loss calculator. So let's, let's take this as an example just to show you what I mean. So let's say both tokens, when we provide liquidity, we go in with token A and token B. Remember, it's always two tokens to provide liquidity. Let's say they're both at $100 when we provide liquidity. So we provide liquidity, we get our LP token, we're off to the farms, we stake our LP token in the farms, we're getting rewards. We think this is awesome. We're getting like this free cryptos. Yay, it's amazing. We're not watching what's happening over with our liquidity, with our two token prices. So let's say uh, what happens is that our token A actually quadruples in value. It goes up to 400. And our token B, it loses value. It goes down to 50. In permanent loss, 37.15%. So that means that when we go to take out our, our liquidity, we've done farming, we get our LP token unstaked, we go back to the decentralized exchange and we say, all right, now I want to get back my two tokens that I provided liquidity with and I want to get my fees. When we go back, we're going to have lost 37.15% relative to if we just held the token. Okay, let's say that goes up to 500 and that goes down to $30. Our impermanent loss would be 53.78%. Okay, now that's uh, compared to if we just held the tokens and we hadn't provided liquidity. I know it's a bit complicated. It's not that complicated. We just have to watch the price. Whilst we're farming, watch the price of the two tokens that you, you provided liquidity with. Make sure they don't go up or down too much 
relative to each other. Because if they do, you're gonna lose money. There are services like this one, apy.vision. So if I get press connect wallet, I'm gonna connect again, it uses my MetaMask. Now look, it's now searching through my wallet and boom. Do you remember last time I, prov I made that Rune ETH LP, which I, I used on Bow Finance, which I staked to show you, you know, about yield farming. It's found the Rune ETH LP in my wallet. It knows that I'm farming with it. And it's showing me that since I started that farming, I have actually lost 15.73% to, to uh, IL, to impermanent loss. It shows you your gains or your losses because of uh, impermanent loss. So sites like APY.Vision, hugely important, really useful uh, to help us out with that sort of thing. So that's the first one, all right, I impermanent loss. Value of our two cryptos, which we uh, provided liquidity for, if they change too much whilst we're still providing liquidity, when we come to get our liquidity out again, uh, we could have lost a lot of money because of impermanent loss. So th the solution is just to either use uh, a service like this, APY.Vision, uh, and it'll track our LP tokens for us, and it will track and it will show us how much we're losing, hopefully in real time. We can do that. Uh, we can use an impermanent loss calculator and we can try and do it manually. Um, but either way, whilst we're farming, we do need to keep an eye on those two tokens, on the price of the two tokens uh, we provided when we provided liquidity. Which is, that's something to really bear in mind and something to just read more about and get used to that concept of impermanent loss and you know how when it becomes a problem and how much of a difference can there be before it starts to become a problem because the more difference there is it becomes more and more of a problem on this curve so that it can, you know it can you can start to lose a lot of money really quickly once the the price of your two tokens diverges from each other enough you know so you've got to watch it anyhow services like this and, and manual ways to watch it Okay, so the next thing definitely has to be the APYs, which I'd say will catch a lot of people out. Do you remember in the last video I showed sort of uh, different farms and we can see the different APY numbers, uh, annual percentage yield, how much you're going to make in a year. Each pool, I'll find one now, hold on. Okay, so here we are. Here's uh, polybull.finance. This is on the Polygon chain. It's a different blockchain. I'm just showing you, I've never seen this. I know nothing about this site. It's not an endorsement or criticism of this site. Literally, I'm just looking at it. But I want to show you something about APYs and, and problems that I've encountered with them. So over here is the homepage. Let's go over to the farms here. And instantly, we see 888.83%. Now, APR, you have two measurements, APR and APY. APY, annual percentage yield. It's the amount you're going to make in a year, okay? APR is the amount you're going to make in a year if you don't include the effects of compounding. So APR is always much better than APY. Because AP, APR, if you compound it every daily, so you take today's earnings and tomorrow you reinvest them, then the next day's earnings will be on your original amount plus yesterday's earnings. And if you keep doing that every day, it can grow significantly. Compounding is a massive tool. So whenever you see APR, it means without the effect of compounding. Now look, you see 883% in a year. If we click this little thing here, what's it showing? So it's showing in one day, 2.42% return, seven days, 18.22% return, 30 days, 104.87% return. That's enormous to get 100% back in 30 days. 365 days, now this is calculated based on current rates, compounding once daily. So this is saying if you compound your profits once every day, it'll be 616,025% at the end of 365 days. Now, people see that, and the, the greed instantly kicks in. Fear of missing out. Oh my, look at this, we can make, let's sell the house, move it all in, let's make it. Now, here's the thing. These change so rapidly, it's unbelievable. And I've, I've gone into farms before thinking, oh my God, that's amazing, I've got to get in now, I've got to get in now. And I've seen other people do it. We've got to get in. We've got my brothers who I've told about this stuff. We've got to get in, let's get everything in. Why aren't we, you know? And what happens is that with these pools, this drops as more people join this pool. So let's say more and more people stake bull USDC and uh, get their LP token, stake their LP token in this and join this pool. They all want to earn that 883% um, per annum or 3,000, 30, whatever, 300,000 you know, percent per annum. They all want to you know, earn that. So they all join this pool. As they do, this APR, I mean, it drops 
so quickly. I've been in pools where you're earning like, you know, 30,000. Oh my God, I'm going to be earning 30,000% per year. Like five other people join. Now you're earning 9,000% per year. Another few people join. An hour later, you're down to 2,000% per year. You'd, you know, another few hours later, you're down to, and it just drops and drops and drops and drops. And a lot of people can sort of liquidate a lot of other assets they own you know they can sell their ethereum sell this sell whatever you can let's move it in they think they've found something new and they found something which no one else has found hugely overexcited fear of missing out you move in thinking you're going to get this and all of a sudden that drops and within a day or two you know that's down to sort of a much much lower percentage now even if it's a hundred percent you know and stuff like that this brings up the next problem. The next problem that I want to talk about isn't this really, because these completely misleading and they, I don't know about the ones on this site. This is not an indication about polyball or anything. I'm talking across the board on all the farms. What I've experienced so far is that these APRs and APYs, they drop so quickly that, it, it, you know, really, I don't pay much attention to them anymore. I've seen them and I've seen them and oh my God, they, they offer the world and they offer so much. And really a couple of days later, everyone's trying to find the next one with high APRs or high APYs and they're moving the money out of those farms into new ones. Now, the, here's the problem. The next problem is something called liquidity. All right, low liquidity. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave that one there. It's kind of a lot to go over in a video. That's in permanent loss and the dodgy APYs. And I'll go over them more in subsequent videos because they keep coming up in yield farming. Those two things are really, they're big problems, you know. So in the next video, I'm going to go over these low liquidity issues. What does that mean? This is, these are things which didn't happen in the traditional finance markets. Low liquidity, the problems with that stem from there not being enough money in the whole crypto market so far. And some of these tokens are really new. So I'll go over what low liquidity is uh, and give some warnings about the sort of situations it can create. How we can go to an exchange and pay this much for a crypto, then we can go to another decentralized exchange and be paying twice as much. Why? And how do we avoid that? What's happening? Uh, and also, there's too little liquidity we can actually be holding a crypto try and swap out of that crypto for something more useful and find there's no market we get stuck holding a crypto we'll go over that in the next video for now thank you very much for watching and i hope you're all well see you